Well, good t- Tuesday evening to you. I'm Brother Terry Bryan, uh, pastor in a local church here. And uh, first of all, I want to start by saying thank you to, to Brother Mike, Pastor Mike, and, and to the church at Bright Star for allowing me an opportunity to come and visit with each of you on Tuesday evenings. Uh, kind of toying around with the fact of calling them Terrific Tuesdays. Because that's what our desire is, that something great comes from, from our time together. And it should because we're going to be in God's Word. Let me also start by saying I am old school. So this is old school meeting millennialism, uh, meeting all the new stuff. I, look, what, look what I have, folks. This is a Bible. Some of you may not know that because you're on your high-tech stuff, and that's great. I appreciate that. But let me ask you to do something. Before next week, find an app that sounds like pages turning so that I'll know that you're with me, okay? So it might in, somebody might even invent that. Jeff, you might, you might t- tap into that and come up with that for us. All right, so, uh, of course, we know this is all occurring because of what's occurring in our nation and in the world. And uh, I know we've heard message after message about we don't need to be fearful. But let me just tell you a little bit what the Lord's put on my heart, and that is that I will be presenting in the next few weeks what I'm calling confidence builders. We're going to be in the Word of God finding his word that applies to our immediate needs and that will give us confidence and encouragement and boldness to, to face what we're facing, okay? Uh, let me also share with you that just kind of a starting point that I have many concerns, much concern about our nation. I was reflecting back last week about, oh, I think it was 1991. Some of you some of you out there will remember that with the, uh, the desert storm issue and, and occurrence and... Uh, I was impressed because for the first time in my life that I could remember, the evening news broadcast, the, the, the media, the broadcasters, made mention about we need to be praying. And I thought, what an awesome thing that, that uh, they overcame their fear of uh, religion and separation of church and state and all this kind of stuff, and they proclaimed we need to be praying as a nation. Now, look, some, what? 19 years later, and there's no mention for, of that. And now, more than ever, you watch the evening news, and it's all coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. It's all the bad stuff. It's all the things that would put fear on us. And the only one that it really I've noticed that's called for a call to prayer for our nation is our president, and we should be thankful for that, that we have a president that's not afraid to do that. Okay? Let's start tonight in a very familiar passage and in fact, it's so familiar, I think sometimes it just becomes a cliche to us. Romans 8, 28. And, and, and as we begin here, uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get the chance to see this lived out before us. And Paul writes and he says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And we need to recognize and understand Paul did not say all things are good. He said all things, when put together uh, from God's perspective, will work together too far good. Uh, probably no greater example than this than uh, the life of Joseph in the Old Testament when his brothers sold him into slavery. He was then imprisoned un- under the Egyptian Pharaoh. And, and yet God took all this and, and he moved from the prison to the palace. And he became second in command to, to, to the, in, in, in Egypt. Uh, right, it, was, it was Pharaoh and him right there. And, and because of that, uh, God used him mightily to spare his family and, and God's nation, God's people. Uh, in fact, when his brothers finally, when he revealed himself to them, he told them, he said, look, what you meant for evil... God made good come from. And, and this is a principle that God will still, he's still doing the same things today. What, what, what the enemy means for bad, God can turn around and incorporate it to make good. Let me, uh, let me give you some, some thoughts about this right now. I honestly think that this could be God helping for us to make America great again. God can take what seems so bad and so devastating right now and, and, and what gives us so much fear, and, and, and he can use this to make us go back to where we should be. Uh, for example, he's taken the church right now and put it back where it originated, in the homes. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, 
I know that later on we'll have an opportunity to come back together as church family, and I'm looking forward to that day. But right now, he's, he's saying, let's get it back to where it started, and, and let's kind of have a fresh start with all this. With that said, he's also restoring what we have nearly lost in America, and that is family. He's putting our families back under one roof. And, and, and I don't know about you, but uh, I think we can make this a good thing or a bad thing. We can get it at each other's throats and, and say we can't get along and do this and do that. In fact, it's a funny thing. I heard the divorce rate is already going up. Uh, that's, not what, that's not how God wants to make this good, okay? Instead, we should recognize he's given us an opportunity and a chance to come back together and, and reinstitute family values in our homes first and then in our churches and then in our nation. And, and, and the result of that will be stronger families, stronger churches, and a stronger nation. Uh, what better opportunity than, than to have family meals restored into our home? Sit around the table, okay? Have a family game night. Opportunities to sit and play. Uh, have real conversations. Now, for this to occur, there's one more thing we have to make a choice about. We have to put these things down for a little while. And we, we have to, to put the technology stuff that's, that's drawn us away from each other even if we might be in the same room, and, and let's set these in another room, and instead we're going to sit and focus and have to talk face-to-face -face with each other, and I think we'll see great results, okay? Another thing that's going on, parents are, they should have a whole new appreciation for school teachers because they're having to take part in their children's education. I don't know who's going to be doing more teaching there, the parents and helping the kids or the kids saying, this is how it's done. I, I can see it working both ways. And maybe one of the greatest things that, that God can do right now and that he has done and is doing uh, is he has removed the God and goddesses of entertainment from our, from our midst. He's removed the idols. We have no, no ball games. We have no movies. Can't go to a theater. We have no concerts. We have none of the things that used to draw us away from him and put our focus on, on someplace that it shouldn't be, okay? So, so we can be thankful for that. So with all that said, the stage has been set now, and it's up to us what we're going to do with, with what's going on. Now, with that, let's go to Romans, not, I'm sorry, let's go to Psalms 121, our, our first basis scripture, I guess you could say, for, for our confidence building, the 121st Psalm. I'm waiting to quit hearing those pages turn. I have to do it myself. All right, the psalmist says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence come, cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Let's pray. Fathers, we get into your word. May we allow you to let it get into us. Lord, may we learn from uh, our time in your word that uh, it, it's intended that we know how to make practical application of it in our lives. We thank you for the truth that we find. We thank you for the promises that we find. We thank you for the encouragement that we have in your word. We thank you for the confidence that can be restored to us as we get your word in its proper place in our lives. So let now we ask that you'd be glorified in, in the rest of this study in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. First thing we need to realize, as the psalmist calls out here, he's saying basically, I'm changing the direction of where I'm looking. I'm lifting up my eyes. And in this day, in the time that we're going through right now, I believe we need to quit looking in the microscope at a virus so much and start looking through the telescope at our almighty God. And not only do we need to look to God, as the psalmist did here, but we need to look for God. Let's look for what God's doing in our midst. They're in the midst of, of, of all this, this stuff, okay? God is at work. 
And he always will be. And then we'll see that as we go on through this particular psalm, okay? So the, so the psalmist said, man, I, I'm looking to, to the Lord because I know that's, he is my source of help. And then he makes mention, oh, by the way, he's the one that made heaven and earth. He created all this. So he, he knows what's going on. And, and then he talks about in that third verse, he says, look, I am going to be the one that will keep you from slipping. You know, words, your foot's not going to be moved. We have steadfastness when we fix our eyes upon him. When our eyes are fixed and fastened on the Lord, then we can be steadfast in the stand that we're taking no matter what's coming against us. We need to recognize and, and understand that. And the Lord is described also in this passage as our keeper. That, that uh, Hebrew word is, is shemar, and actually it means he's watching over us. Like a, like a shepherd watches over his sheep, he's guarding us as a shepherd does. He's keeping us safe. And t- reminds us of another psalm, the 23rd psalm, when David said, The Lord is my shepherd. We need to be mindful of that as we go through these trying times in our life. We need to look for his activity. We need to see what he's doing. We need to realize what he is capable of, that he is able, he is available, and he is ours. We need, to, we need to lean on him. And there's a lot of stuff going on we don't understand. Well, I believe God also says that's all right because that's when you need to trust. And we can always do that, just trust in him. Just trust in him. He's our keeper. Now, look at this also in verse 6. I didn't realize this, but, but uh, God was, came out before sunscreen. Look at that. The sun will not smite thee by day. How about that? As we stand under the shadow of his wing, we can be safe in, in, in all things. Nor shall the moon smite us by night. He'll preserve us from all evil. Uh, I personally think there's a lot of this uh, stuff that's it's going to lend itself to even more evil uh, and, and we'll be preserved, we'll be protected through the midst of all that. Now is the time for us to rise up, though, as God's people and, and, and be an example to the world and say, Look what my God can do. Look what my God is doing. And what he's doing for me, he will do for you. Now is not the time for Christians to cry out in fear. Let's go back to that Romans 8, 28. What did it, what did it tell us? It, t- it told us that God works all things for good for those that are the called according to his purpose. It's time for us to live like the called. Live like we're truly his children. You know, all, all of us can remember... Maybe if you had big brothers, I had a big brother. He was smaller than me, but he still called himself big brother. But he was always there to protect me. If somebody was going to try to give me some trouble, he'd, he'd show up and, and he'd say, uh-uh, this is not going to happen. Well, we need to recognize this, this is the way God is with us. For his children, he, he, he's not just big brother, he's big father. He's our dad. And, and what dad will let somebody do any kind of damage to, to their children? Uh, Sure, it won't be God. So let's be mindful that God's aware of what's going on. Nothing's catching him by surprise. And and let's take the time then to ask ourselves, what am I focusing on? Might not be a bad idea to turn off the news for a while and turn on the word. Let's get back in this word and let's see what God has to say about the coronavirus and and the other threats that may come our way. I hope that you've been encouraged by this and that you will be encouraged by this. Again, I say thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I am learning as, a, as an old dog and learning new tricks on this stuff. Uh, I'm amazed at, at how God can get his word out through social media even. And uh, I, I've got to confess to you, there's been some times I've probably said some bad stuff about it. Uh, but now, man, now it's got a place where it can be used for good. Let's be sure that's what we're doing, okay? So be encouraged. And I know uh, Pastor Mike has told you all that, uh, man, if you have any need, contact Bright, Bright Star Church, and they're, they're here to help you, and uh, especially in this time. God bless you. Have a great evening. Look for God and his handiwork.